This video is an introductory video on the alcohols family. So in the video we're going to look at what makes them alcohols, so their functional group, how you name alcohols, how you classify alcohols and their physical properties. So we'll start with the functional group of the alcohols. So you can see I've written on the board there the functional group is the OH group. So on each of these molecules we have an OH group, that's the red and the white, directly bonded to a carbon atom. So that's going on in all of these four molecules. So these all belong to the alcohols group of molecules. What's this functional group called? It's called the hydroxyl group. And we've seen OHs before in unit one, um, but we've seen OH minus, not OH. So a common mistake would be to call this the hydroxide group. It's not a hydroxide group. It's called a hydroxyl group. So we'll look at naming some alcohols now. Um, you can see in blue there written the squiggly line with all at the end. So that's to let you know that alcohols have all at the end of their name. So we'll start with this one here. We have two carbons in the chain. So it's going to be eth. And because that's basically it with the OH on the carbon there, this is called ethanol. I've written the various formulae representations for ethanol now. You can see here we have the structural formula. So we have the CH3, CH2, OH. The skeletal formula, CH3, CH2, and then a bond to the OH. And the displayed formula is here. You just be careful when you, especially with displayed formulae, and I'll point this out on each of the following that I do, it's the O that's bonded to the carbon. So the O must be bonded to the carbon, otherwise you would not be awarded the mark. We'll go for a longer alcohol now. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be hept. Hept for seven. Now, where's the OH group? Where's the hydroxyl group? Well, if we count from the left, it's on number one, two, three, four, five. But if we count from the right, it's on one, two, three. And the rule is we must go with the lower number. So this will be called heptan-3-ol. And again, here are the various formulae. So we'll start with the the structural formula, CH3, CH2, 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 CH, and there's the OH hydroxyl group, CH2, CH3. Skeletal formula, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we're 7 carbons in the chain, and the OH hydroxyl group is on carbon number 3. 1, 2, 3, so I put it there. And I've made sure the oxygen is connected to the carbon. And again, the displayed formula. I'm sure you can see that's the correct displayed formula. And again, the oxygen directly linked to that carbon. So I'm just going to adapt the one we've just looked at. Um, so what I'm going to do is put a methyl group on this carbon here and see if we can establish the name for this one. So it's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's still hept and 3 all because the OH is still on carbon number 3. But you can see now on carbon number 4, we've got this methyl group here. So this would be called 4 methyl heptan 3 all The last one of these now, I've put two hydroxyl groups into the molecule. 
just to show you what that will be called. So again, we're going to apply the same rule. Now we've got one, two, three carbons, so we'd expect to see prop in this name because of the three carbons. We'd expect to see all in the name because we do have the hydroxyl group. But because we've got two, we would call this a diol. So that's two OHs. And what we need to do is say where these OH groups are, these hydroxyl groups are. Well, they're at the very ends of the molecule, so we'll say that's carbon number one. So that must be carbon number three. So we'd expect a one, three in the name. So the name, putting that together, this would be called propane one, three, diol. So we're going to look at classification of alcohols now. You can see written in green there, there are three classes of alcohol, primary, secondary and tertiary. So we're going to look at each type and establish how you work out whether it's primary, secondary or tertiary. So we'll look at the simplest one here. The thing to do is to establish the carbon that's bonded to the hydroxyl group. So it's obviously this one here. And then you need to count how many directly bonded carbons are there to the hydroxyl carbon. There's only this one. And so that's a primary alcohol. If we look at this one, the hydroxyl group is bonded to this carbon here. So how many directly bonded carbons are there to this? There's one, two, three. So this is what we call a tertiary alcohol. Now this is obviously the secondary one, so let's just check that that's the case. So hydroxyl group, there's the carbon directly bonded to the hydroxyl group. How many directly bonded carbons are there? There's one, two. So that would be a secondary alcohol. I'm going to look at the physical properties of alcohols now. And you can see on the whiteboard I've put two water molecules. And this is just to recap what we learned in Unit 1 about the intermolecular forces between water molecules. So if you can remember, when you have a hydrogen directly bonded to either a fluorine, an oxygen or a nitrogen, so we've got oxygen in this case directly bonded to a hydrogen, then we can have hydrogen bonding between the molecules. So if we put the dipole on, the OH bond, so it would be slightly negative on the oxygen, slightly positive on the hydrogen. We'll do the same on this one. We'll show the lone pair, or one of the lone pairs, and we show the hydrogen bond. So if you can remember from Unit 1, what does that do to the physical properties of water? Well, it gives it a higher boiling point than you would expect. Because extra energy has to be put in to overcome this strong intermolecular force. So to boil something, remember, you're just separating the molecules. Um, and so more energy needed to, to break that hydrogen bond. So now I've got the two alcohol molecules side by side and hopefully you can see the direct similarity between water and alcohol molecules. We've got the same feature, we've got an OH bond in the molecules and so we get hydrogen bonding between alcohols. So what will this do to physical properties? Well, one of the physical properties will be the boiling point will be higher than expected. Again, to boil alcohol, you need to separate the molecules. We don't pull atoms, we're not pulling atoms off. When you boil something, you're not breaking covalent bonds. You're just separating the molecules. So you're overcoming, you're breaking the intermolecular force. And because this is 
relatively strong, this hydrogen bond, you've got to put more energy in to overcome that. Now just to make a point of comparison, we've got two propane molecules on the screen now and the MR of, of this molecule is 44 and the MR of ethanol that we had on previously is 46. So they're of comparable size, molecular mass, but their boiling points are very, very different. Now propane has a very low boiling point and that's because the intermolecular force that would exist between these non-polar alkane molecules are very, very weak. So all we've got between alkane molecules are van der Waals forces And they're very, very weak in comparison to hydrogen bonding. And so therefore, very, very easy to separate the molecules. And the boiling point is much, much lower as a result. The final physical property that we're going to look at with the alcohols is their solubility in water. So you can see I've got two ethanol molecules near each other. So they would be hydrogen bonded to each other. And if we put that in water as to water molecules also hydrogen bonded together. So for ethanol to dissolve in water it has to be able to make hydrogen bonds with water. So to break these hydrogen bonds well that would require some energy but then you would get some energy back or released when the new hydrogen bonds are formed between the alcohol and the water molecules. And there's enough energy released to facilitate the process. Now, there's another driving force that's helping this process take place, and that's known as entropy, which you will learn about at A2, but I'm not going to complicate it with entropy for this, because at AS, all you need to do to explain why alcohols dissolve in water is, is their ability to form hydrogen bonds with water. And just to finish off, we're going to do a comparison between ethanol, which only has two carbons, so it's a, it's a small alcohol molecule. Now that's very, very soluble in water. We've replaced the carbon chain with a chain of four now. So we've got butan one all and you can see that these alcohol molecules are still hydrogen bonded together. Obviously the water molecules are hydrogen bonded together. So remember to dissolve something we have to put energy in to overcome the hydrogen bonds and the driving force or part of the driving force is the energy that's released when the new hydrogen bonds are formed between the alcohol and the water. Now what happens is the as the carbon chain gets longer you can you appreciate that the long carbon chain on this alcohol molecule is going to get in the way of some of the hydrogen bonds forming between the water and the alcohol and so not as many hydrogen bonds can form when you have a long alcohol molecule and so you're not getting that energy back and so the process can't happen. So long hydrocarbon chains, sorry, or long carbon chains in alcohol molecules would prevent hydrogen bonding from taking place and so these are less soluble and ultimately insoluble.